Hi guys, uh, this is Typical Wyvern. I usually don't make videos uh, where I talk about things like other than video games. Normally I'm just doing that. But I felt like, I don't know, someone told me today to make this video, so I'm just making it. Um, I'm not really used to doing this type of thing, but wrestling is something I've always been passionate about. Uh, it was actually my first love before anything else. Um, I remember being a little kid and watching it and just growing up with it and wanting to be a pro wrestler when I was a kid. And then, you know, that dream faded and a whole bunch of stuff. But I want to talk about something. Because a lot of news articles are coming out about it. And it's something that I've been very um, confused about. So these articles are coming out now saying that uh, AEW is probably going to buy out CM Punk's contract. Um, and then that'll be it after this media scrum. And the reason why this video is titled what it is, is because I am just genuinely confused. And this might get a little heated. I might get a little angry because whenever I think about it, I just get a little flustered and irritated. So I'm just going to run through this one step at a time until I maybe, hopefully, maybe I'll answer the question myself. So you're telling me. That CM Punk comes into the company, you know, he wrestles, you know, for a year. Everybody likes him. There's no issues. He apparently he's helping out backstage. The only people who don't seem to really get along with him or work with him is the elite. Right. He finally gets a thing with a guy from the elite, Hangman and Page. He might not be in the elite, but he's in their camp, you know, he's in, he's one of their friends for the championship. During his promo with Punk, Hangman Adam Page goes off script, makes up something completely off the fly about Colt Cabana, basically, hint, alluding to the fact that he got Colt Cabana fired. CM Punk looks confused. Everybody was confused. I remember watching that being like, what the hell was that about? And apparently a lot of people had the exact same reaction. What the hell was that about? So, CM Punk then wrestles Hangman Adam Page, wins the championship, gets injured. During that entire time that he's out, you are seeing news article after news article about how he got Cole Cabana fired. Oh, he's such a piece of shit. He's a bad guy. He got Cole Cabana fired. Nobody likes him backstage, according to, you know, certain sources, which seems to me like from what the source is, being Dave Meltzer most of the time, is probably just the elite saying it, right? You're telling me that when he came back, he has a program with John Moxley. He puts John Moxley over to win the championship. Makes John Moxley look really good. Has his promo with a steal. Again, another moment that Punk had in AEW that was stellar. He wrestles his match at AEW. Uh, I forgot the pay-per-view. Whatever pay-per-view it was. He wrestles John Moxley. He wins the championship back. Goes to the media scrum. And then he confronts the media, which I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of people do that with media. A lot of people are very harsh with media, especially in the pro wrestling world is one of the very few places where the media just seems to get protected, which is ridiculous because they constantly are feeding bullshit constantly whether it's dave Meltzer, whether it's even just little peons like cultaholic always feeding bullshit constantly he goes mind you injured arm he's in pain during this interview he's still got blood on his face he's not showered he's not cleaned up right He says the things he says, which we can argue every – no matter what, what he said was right or wrong. In my opinion, he was very unprofessional. However, he was trying to make a point. Tony Khan, as his boss, should have told him to knock it off. Could have just been a quick little whisper in the ear. Hey, tone it down. Done. That's all he had to do. Punk cut him off. Very rude. Disrespectful to do your boss. I'm not defending his actions. However, 
You're telling me that after the scrum, he goes into his locker room. This is all the information that I at least I can get. There's a lot of pieces to this that are still not out, so my opinion could change. But you're telling me he goes to his locker room. He's icing his arm, assumably. Probably trying to get cleaned up from his match. It's him and assumably Ace Steel's wife. Even if it wasn't a breaking down the door, even if it was just them coming in, or even asking to come in, and Punk said yes, and they were being aggressive to the point where Punk had to resort to violence. Because I don't see Punk as the type to just start swinging. He's never done that before, even when he had huge issues with Triple H, when he had huge issues with several people in WWE, he never once got violent You're telling me these guys as EVPs who should have been smart enough to wait this out. They should have, they are, they were already calmed down. They had finished their match because they did it early on in the night. They had time to shower, relax, do whatever they can. Punk is still in pain. He's still getting over his match. These guys come in. They should not have done that. They should not at all have come to his locker room. This should have been a strictly Tony deals with it situation. Because he's their boss. They might be EVPs. That does not that is not professional. When you see you know that one of your guys, one of your top employees, one of your biggest draws, if not your biggest draw, is trying to, you know, recuperate from their match. They come in. All, I don't know the full story, but all I know is somebody escalated things. Matt Jackson got knocked out by Punk. Uh, a chair was thrown at Nick, I think. I, I, I mixed the two of them up. Um, apparently, Kenny Omega was trying to get Larry. Uh, I'm assuming that was a positive situation. I'm assuming he was trying to uh, protect the dog. A steel bite him, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, kind of screwed up. You're telling me, and the reason why Ace Steel was there was because his wife was in there, and she was apparently already injured. I think it was like a broken leg or something. He runs down the hall, sees all this going on, sees that there's somebody grabbing at something. For all we know, the dog could have been right next to his wife, and he could have assumed that he was getting violent with his wife, which would have been crazy to think about, but you never know what's going through your head when you're seeing all this stuff and you have adrenaline rushing. He bites Kenny Omega. They all get into a tussle, and apparently things did not calm down or escalate. Why in hell is Punk the sole person that people are attacking. You have certain people who are pissed off at specifically the Young Bucks. I'm pissed off at pretty much everybody in this situation. I'm extremely mad with Hangman Adam Page because the fact he went off script like that when he was the world champion. He was so desperate to be a world champion that he literally felt so threatened by dropping the championship to somebody like CM Punk that he did that. There's nothing else I can see other than that. Which, I'm sorry to Hangman Adam Page, but... If you're going to drop the championship to anybody, you should probably want to drop it to somebody who's held multiple world championships in your competing company. Some guy who is literally a legend for 2011-2013. Somebody who, if it wasn't for his bad issues with WWE, probably would have been in the Hall of Fame already. Anyway, you're telling me Punk is the one who should be let go. And the thing is, this could have been a thing where maybe Punk is the one who's pushing back. And that is entirely possible. If that comes out, then that'll be completely understandable. Because Punk, and this is as a CM Punk fan, Punk is a crybaby on a lot of regards. He does have this issue where he sees things his way and he wants things done his way. And that's where things become an issue. And I think that's one reason why the elite don't like him. Is because he will push back on their shit. 
And honestly, these guys should never have been given the positions they were given at all. You never want to make pro wrestlers EVPs of your company because that literally, let's use this as a situation that I can deal with personally. Backyard wrestling. Friends who backyard wrestle tend to have issues because they all think they're in charge. Some of which, and then it leads to conflict because somebody wants to hold the world title. And then another one says, no, I should. And another person wants to hold this championship. And another person wants to hold this. And another person wants to win this. And this person thinks that this person's won too much. This person should win this. And it becomes a complete issue. And that's exactly what AEW reminds me of. It reminds me of a shitty backyard wrestling company from like the old fucking 2010 days of YouTube. It's the same drama. And it all seems to stem from the elite. Tony Khan is not... is He's definitely to blame for a lot of this. Because the fact that he lets this shit happen is ridiculous. How are you going to fire, or sorry, buy out somebody's contract, CM Punk's contract, one of your top draws? How are you going to let that guy go when you know that WWE right now is fucking turning constantly, kicking ass? The second they lost Vince and Triple H was in charge, they started doing things that they you wouldn't even have thought of five years ago. Bringing back talent that was let go for no reason, bumping up numbers, re-debuting people, ridiculous stuff. They are literally starting this uphill climb to getting back to how good they used to be. And you're going to sit there, and you're going to take a guy who is literally infamously known for hating being in WWE. You're going to take your biggest draw who was known for that. And you're going to let him go. When you're trying to compete with WWE. That's why AEW makes no sense to me. Because if you want to say that you're a competing company. And you have a draw like that. And you're going to let them go because of the EVPs that literally don't, they don't even add to his ratings. They decline his viewership. The amount of times I've literally seen the analytics and seen that during the hour of the Young Bucks or Kenny Omega being involved in something and you see it drops 200,000 viewers most of the time, that's a problem. It means they're not wanting to be watched. There might be a cult following that started watching AEW back in the day who really like it, but you cannot base your your unique first fans as your basis for trying to make it as a successful company. That's like if Vince McMahon was still in 2015 trying to cater to the people who were fans of fucking WWWF. He wouldn't be. He'd see no reason to because those are not the fans that he's trying to market to to build his business. I have a lot of opinions about WWE and AEW and a whole lot of crap. I'm sorry if this came off as a little angry. It's just I'm very confused about this whole situation. When more news comes out about it, I will definitely give a follow-up. I will definitely even rescind some of my words if I am proven completely wrong. But it seems to me like this was the dumbest thing he could have done in this situation. Besides letting everything slide, which he did. Tony Khan is a dumbass, and I'm going to continue to say that probably till the end of time. The guy literally had the all the potential in the fucking world, not even just with Punk, with just AEW in general, and he's literally been letting it slip out of his hands. He's got billions of dollars, mostly his dad's money, but he also still has a good chunk of change himself. He's got this company that literally... Could have been one of the biggest companies, you know, in wrestling history. This company literally could have topped WC, what WCW is doing, but it's never going to because of how he runs his business. Letting a go, letting go a guy like CM Punk, who literally, uh, I could go on for days. I'm sorry. I'm gonna let this one go because it's already been a 15 minute rant, and I feel like I've gotten a little too heated. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of my wrestling opinions, leave a comment. 
leave a like, subscribe. I'll start doing these along with my gaming stuff. I think this is actually be a really fun topic to get into. I'm not always this angry. In fact, I'm usually positive about wrestling situations. Um, but this one just confuses the ever-living hell out of me, and it does just piss me off that this whole situation went the way it did. None of this should have happened at all, and it's everybody's fault involved, including Punk, absolutely, but I don't understand why him and Ace Steel are the two getting punished for this situation. Ace Steel, I kind of can understand, you know, you know, throw him out, you know, scapegoat. I could get if they did it that way, but instead the way they went about this was complete other bullshit. I'm going to go to work. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I usually don't reply to comments if they're aggressive, so if you're going to be leaving a comment being nasty, I won't debate you about it. I already have my vision of how everything's going, um, but I do appreciate you leaving a comment anyway. Um, if I do happen to have the time, I will respond. Just please be respectful. Uh, I, li I like my channel to have good vibes overall. Uh, this is probably the first video I've ever posted where I was kind of nasty. Um, and I'm still, again, I'm trying to back it up a little bit by being like, hey, everybody else is at fault, you know? Because it's true. So, whatever. I'm going to go to work now. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys then.